Hi folks, welcome to another episode of My Life with Robert Burns. Jim Thompson and me here again for a blether with another of our Burns cronies. Our guest tonight burst onto the wider Burns scene as one of the stars of the virtual Burns Supper from the cottage earlier in the year. Cronies everywhere, please welcome all the way from Turbouton, Samantha Brown, or more properly to our friends, Pixie Brown. Hi Pixie. Hi there, Douglas. Hi there, Jim. How are you doing? Thanks for having me on, by the way. It's uh, a great honour and pleasure to be joining you tonight. Thank you so much. Well, thank you very much for agreeing to talk to us. The first question always is, Pixie, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, please? Well, aye. All right, then. Uh, my name is, my full title is Samantha Jane Galloway-Brown. Uh, I'm a Turbouton lassie. Uh, I grew up here in Turbouton, um, obviously surrounded by Robert Burns. Just felt as if he was walking with me at times as a wee lassie and getting into the Bachelors Club as a wainty was amazing. Uh, so I, I grew up here in Turbouton. I went to Turbouton Primary School. Then we get shunted on to air. Uh, to Main Home Academy. So I attended Main Home Academy just for a few years. I wasn't, uh, I didn't finish my schooling years, but uh, I went to college later in life. Um, I went to university later on in life as well. Because um, when I grew up, I, and I still don't care, I, I didn't care what I wanted to be. And I still don't care what I want to be. But, um, no, I went to uh, college and I did uh, social care and I worked for a time doing working with disability sector and I absolutely loved doing that. Um, I then went to college and I did a music management course because I'm, I'm right into my music every weekend. I love going to gigs. I, I just love live music all together. I love local music. I used to uh, do a radio show at uni, when I went to uni, I, I specialised in radio, I did media um, as a degree, and I specialised in radio. I did start doing video, but when you do video, you had to work in teams, and sometimes your team didn't turn up, and sometimes you were left, and with radio, it's just you. So I decided, if I don't pass radio, I've nobody else to blame bar myself, and I love music, so it was, it was the ideal choice. So I did radio, and I the a great privilege of getting to get, I used to blag into gigs when I was young. I kid when I was in the guest list. I'm in the guest list, you know. What's your name? Uh, Samantha Brown, you know. What do you mean I'm knowing it? I should be on it. I know the band. And they would let you in. What a boss man getting in, you know, just blagging everywhere. And then when I started doing radio, um, I used to promote unsigned artists from all about Ayrshire. Some of my show was called... Um, Live and Unleashed with Sammy B. I also did a live cheese tasting show on the radio. And I used to do celebrity cheese tasting with like, all the bands that I met. So I, I, used to, I used to go to loads of gigs and then I was allowed in on the guest list. It wasn't as much as a buzz, to be fair, do you know what I mean? Because you're <laughs> actually on it now, but... Sorry, girl. Sorry. How, how did the cheese tasting work? Did you did you interview them over the radio and, and just sample cheese? How, how was that? Aye, that was my... Uh, what, what show was that called? The Homegrown Show. That was my my Friday afternoon show for uh, University Radio, UCA Radio, back in the day. And uh, what I did, because everybody knows I love cheese. I absolutely love cheese. I'm a vegetarian, but I can't get up the cheese, man. Can't get it. I couldn't go vegan. You know what I mean? It's a step too far. But um, everybody knows I love cheese. So there used to be a wee deli in air called Chisholm's. So I fired in there the other day and I was like, ah, eh, I do local radio, eh, university radio, and I was thinking about doing a live cheese tasting show. And if you gave me three cheeses a week, I could do cheese of the week and then the cheeses go through and then we'll have cheese of the month. Would you sponsor me? And I'll do jingles and all that. And, and they were like, ah, 
I will do that. It was magic free cheese, man. Do you know what I mean? Every <laughs> Friday. Yes, the bands loved it. The, no, they would come into the studio, would do it live. Do you know what I mean? And it was amazing. It was amazing. And my catchphrase used to be on a Friday, there's no eating or drinking in the studio. Everybody knows that. And we'd be full of cheese, of oh, sun-dried tomatoes, crusty beef, and virtual wine. <laughs> so I've, all, I've, I've always loved just being about people and listening to music, listening to poetry, great fan of poetry, um, obviously of Robert Burns, but of other poets, uh, John Cooper Clark, uh, I love his poetry for Salford. I love local poets, Tracy Harvey is right up there for me, she is absolutely amazing. Uh, Simon Lamb, who is just outstanding. They're so inspirational. So I've always had a love for poetry and music and cheese and coos. I was in the of the coos day. And, and, and what's your favourite style of music? Oh, I love Primal Scream. Everybody knows I love the Bobby. Bobby Gillespie, he is my favourite. Oh. If you're watching, Bobby, sorry I wasn't at the gig at Transmit, but during these COVID times, a wee selfie on my telly where you was good enough for me, pal, but I'll be back to see you next year. <laughs> That's a Bobby Gillespie. <laughs> and were you, were you a regular at Primal Scream gigs? Oh, I am there all the time. I've been gone for years. I think he actually kens me now. I go with my Think Positive sign. I, he does, I can, he knows me. I know he'd be worried about me thinking there I wasn't at his gig, but just to let him know I'm okay, Bobby, I'm safe, uh, but I'm keeping myself safe, so I'll, I'll see you next year at the at the uh, Queen's Park gig. I'll be there to see him then. But, but free radio, right? So I did radio and I had great fun doing it and I interviewed quite a lot of um, sort of well-known bands like the Wee View, and I interviewed them. I interviewed Jets, who are an Australian band. I interviewed them in their hotel room, which was amazing. I've interviewed a band called Deftones, uh, who are quite rocky and well, well known. And I, I, I always just to try and predict what cheese the celebrities would like. And I, I went with them. I'm like, they're going to like the whiskey cheese because they're rock and roll. <laughs> sure enough, whiskey cheese. Do you know what I mean? So I've interviewed lots and lots of bands, I've been to lots and lots of gigs, that's my kind of thing. Poetry's always been there. I love writing myself, but I, I, I don't really share a lot of my own poetry, because I think it's that fear, isn't it? You're like, oh, I don't know about this. And, you know, so you write for yourself, and I think uh, writing is a good release for anybody, um, especially now during these COVID times, like, to write about it, or even if you draw or do anything, being creative, um, really, really helps, and being amongst nature, I think as well. I'm a great lover of nature. Clean up to Goat and Woods campaign. I, I, I'm the founder member of that. Um, and, and how does that work? What, what's the what's the story of Goat and Woods, and what needs to be done? Well, what happened was six. I think it's six years ago now. I two thousand and five. It was. I seen a post on Facebook, somebody's been doing the woods and there was all this rubbish, like pure dump fly happened. And folk were going after not on the Facebook, do you know what I mean? Something needs done about this, do, 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 do. And I was in my break at work on my lunch and I seen this and I went, I really need to do something about this. Because I work, I'm a community worker and I work down in the air in the log side area. And I, I loved my job there and I put my heart and soul into working with that community and doing good for it. And I just thought, it's time you did something for your own community, Sammy Moon. So I made a few um, a few calls to see if we could get a skip for free for the council, uh, to see if we could get ladder pickers as well and all the rest of it. And I'd, I had to wait a few weeks, but in that time, within that few weeks, I held a public meeting. I just decided to go for it. So I held a public meeting, folk turned up, had a list, got folks' names, contact numbers, who pledged that they would come and help and do this. And two weeks later, I got uh, the skip and we all went down. We did the clear up and here we are six years later, we're still doing it. Don't get me wrong, it's 
no work it was. I mean, the amount of rubbish, oh, I don't even know how many tons, but it was a lot, a lot. And the place that we clear up is actually the paths that Robert Burns would have walked uh, if we turned out to get to Montgomery Castle, you know? So we're, we're, we're trying to protect our heritage and our history uh, by doing our wee bit. But it's a beautiful place doing, uh, doing the woods now. We've, we've transformed it. Um, we've got play, we made a play area, we've got like, swings for the wings. Kind of like made out the, for the trees, the old fashioned rope swings. We've got a fire pit we've made. We've got um, uh, benches as well, made with natural wood that fell for the wood. So that, that's been upcycled into like, natural benches for Wayne's grandparents, every day to get doing and enjoy nature again. Do you know, connect with nature, because I, I, as I say, I think it's really important. I've been a country lassie, like I am. Um, I, I love nature and I, I think we should protect it a bit more than what we do as humans, do you know? Uh, good, good, good for I, you. Like Robert Burns, I think he was um, very much into the natural space and the environment and um, caring for just the, the beauty that we are blessed with, um, the beautiful countryside that we, we have around here in Ayrshire. To be very proud of what we've got. We've got the seashores, we've got the country, we've got the firm land, we've got the woodland, do you know, and we've got beautiful coastlines. The best in the world. Well, I'm just I'm just looking at this book that I've got beside me. I don't know if you've read it. Um, and I'm reading the back of it at the moment, and it's saying, Burns referred to nature, including flowers, trees, burdens, and landscape, no fewer than 2,880 times. There you are. So there you go. There you are. No. Oh, you're, de you're dead right. But my wife, yeah, I've yeah, not even spoke, spoke up, sorry, I've not even spoke about, do you know, I, I'm a people person, as you can, I, I love people. I love animals, I love everything, I love nature, I love, but um, I'm a community worker and um, I do lots of different stuff in the community down at Lockside and there. I'm very proud to be working down there with that community because they're the result of that. Absolutely enjoy my job every single day. I get into my work singing, you know, daily, day, every morning. Uh, sometimes the Johnnies, we used to have an older Johnny who was like, are you so happy about come here and work, because I love coming to work, because I love my job. But also, um, I used to work for Credit Union in Cumnock, Cumnock and Dun Valley. I'm a great believer in credit unions. I think they're a great thing, you know. And the thing, here's my Jiko and my wee cat. Um, the credit unions, I'm going to speak about them because I think they're a, they're a great thing. They're like a community bank, and I think the name Credit Union kind of scares people. Whereas community bank would be a better name. They're, they're there to support people, encourage people to save and, and, and to give low interest loans and so forth and so forth. But I, I just think credit union is a great service uh, for communities, you know, and I work for them as a development worker um, and I really enjoyed my time working for them as well. So it's always been about people and always been about community for me. Uh, and, my, and my work career. I, th I think wherever you worked at, you'd be a success at it, Pixie, because you're a bundle of energy. Um, and, and I was going to mention that you're a cat lover as well. So, um, yeah, and you, you introduced my Chico there before I get the chance. Yes, she has. Yes, yes, yes. But, but, but I want to take you back to, to poetry because you mentioned uh, some of your favorite poems, um, but you do a bit of poetry yourself, don't you? I do Douglas Eyre and I've been doing a wee bit more for coming into the Bachelors Club family because I feel, do you know, I feel um, welcome and content with you guys, do you know, and like I know you now and, do you know, when you're sharing your own stuff, it's, it is quite frightening, you know, it is quite frightening and you don't know how it's going to be, you know, how, how it's going to be received by people. Um, but my confidence has came up a load for joining you guys. I can't thank you enough, honestly. You're like my big family. 
<laughs> well, is your confidence at a level that you could maybe give us one of your own poems before we start talking about Burns? Majiko, could mummy do a wee poem for the people? Majiko says, aye, mummy, you could. Well done, Majiko. I know I need to write a poem about her Majiko, actually, didn't I, Hen? She's my wee rescue cat. I rescued her when she was 12. Her name was Magic. Then the answer to it. But I know at the end of it, and she's now Majiko. New life. New life. <laughs> you know? And she's now 17. She's amazing. She's like Benjamin Button. She's younger every year, didn't you, Hen? Anyway, sorry, folks. I'm a blather, you can tell, I'm sorry. Well, that's what we like on this, this <laughs> podcast. Right, so that's in I wrote uh, during the lockdown uh, and during the COVID times, which is still happening, but it was quite a few months ago. And I'll read it for you now. I'm not going to tell you the name of it because it'll come out at the end. Anyway, it goes like this. There's a new word cutting about and it's getting on my goat. Born during the COVID pandemic, to rile me takes a lot. But this hashtag saying is everywhere, and it's grating on my nerves. It's even on the telly adverts. What purpose does it serve? Twitter, Facebook, it's on them all, everywhere I look. It's there. It makes me feel in a rage. Don't ever dare ask me to share. My friends have said it to me. And me, I flip my lid. Don't mention your stupid word again for it can do no good. It's made up utter nonsense. This word just does not belong. And it should not be spoken. We are good Scots tongue. We've all loved our holidays, been near to Stranraer, down the West Highland Way, no need for a car, or driving round the North 500 and your fancy motor home, taking in your own beautiful scenery. You have all your holidays just the same. Across to Arran on the ferry, to climb up Goat Fell, or to, or to the Tullock Ringing Centre to yank the rope of a bell. Wherever you decide to go, Dumfries and Galloway, Peebles or St Andrews, I've only this to say. This word that's gone about, doesn't it sum up your time that you've enjoyed a war? And to me, that's a crime. You've been your holidays all around, our bonny, bra nation. Be proud to call it a holiday, for it's no a staycation. <laughs> you saw Ken, I don't like that word, staycation. It's gone your holidays. If I went my holidays in our nation, in our country, what I mean. Anyway. <laughs> Very good. Have, have you have you ever taken part in a, any poetry competitions? No, 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 no. But I've hosted a few poetry nights, so I have. I used to do a wee night called Poetry Sangs and Clatter in the courtyard bar in here. So I did, and I've been to the market in Cumnock. Um, I hosted a poetry night there that asked me to come up and host it for them. Uh, Is that the one that Jim Monaghan used to be involved with? Your Jim, aye. Aye, aye. Your Jim wasn't there that night, but I think he'd moved on to the Glasgow by the time. Aye, I, I used to go to these at, at the market. They were great. I feel terrible for not even mentioning their Jim. Jim, if you're watching, you can. You're my favourite poet for in here, pal. Can what I'm saying? Love Jim Monin. See that, uh, the United Colours are coming up. That's, That's a excellent. poem in a half, is it, no? Tremendous. That's a poem in a half. He's absolutely outstanding there, Jim. Uh, he does a lot of good work for the community up in uh, Govan Hill. Govan Hill, aye. He's, oh, he's, he's, 
you know, he, he again, he's up there too. Right yeah. <laughs> you know. Very good. Talk about names. Pixie. Where did Pixie come from? <laughs> that's, that's my Woodlands name. <laughs> I used to be, my, my email address used to be, my old one used to be Fairy Lady. But that's when I used to go to tea in the park and I, was, I used to give wishes to the crowd dressed as a fairy. But then when I set up the woods thing, yeah, you've got to move on for being a fairy. I'll be a wee pixie. And pixie brown, I think it just suits me, do you know? It's perfect. You know? So let, let's stop talking about pixie brown and let's start talking about Robert Burns and I'll get Jim to get you into a conversation about that. Let's <laughs> indeed. Let's indeed. An another, another Bobby that I love is Robert Burns, so I am looking forward to talking about him. Oh dear, <laughs> I just feel over one of these 60 movies like Barbarella. It's just, it's, this is wonderful. <laughs> but I mean, I, I'm assuming you grew up with Bob's because you're a devout lassie. Did you dig it anything at the school about him? I when we grew up with the Burns competitions and that, and um, do you know something, Jim? I actually don't, I, I remember it, but. More importantly, I remember it being Robert Burns being in my family more than at the skill. I don't know whether that's just my mind because, you know, my family's really important to me and the, the skill maybe wasn't that important to me. Um, but I we would have Burns competitions, I'm quite sure yet. But I can't remember ever entering that or what I did or, or owning about it. I don't know. I don't know. Why, I probably because I never won it, Jim. That's probably what was wrong with me. I'll <laughs> blank that out. Never won. No interest. It. <laughs> so, so how how did it start at home then? Who was it at home? Well, it was my gran and papa, my granny Jeannie Murphy, and my papa Sam Galloway, um, who used to sing the songs of Robert Burns to when I was a wee, and that is vivid in my mind as if it was yesterday. Do you know, I can see my granny sitting in the new. We used to call it the big Batman chair. It was a black leather number. Kind of one with the big hang at the back. Comes in, the arms, and then you could swing round in it. It was a belter of a chair. Oh, as Wayne's loved it. But my wee granny, you know, she'd go in there and, oh. She used to sing the deals of all the excitement. I can still hear her to this day. Crazy, and my gran died. Do you know what I mean? In 1981, so she did. Um, and I, I can still, when, when I was just a wee lassie, but I can still see my granny, I can still hear her singing it. And my papa, <laughs> oh, my papa, Sam Galloway, if one of the is, is tuning in and can remember old Sam, you would can, he never just a gin. So no just Burns at own and my papa was he was a character in a hoff, so he was and he get but I, I always the one that makes me quite emotional is the Afon kiss that he used to do. He was absolutely brilliant at it. And my love was like a red, red rose. He used to sing that and all to us. He used to sing and all it's not a bum song, but Boney Galloway because it, it were the Galloways, you know. And he... Uh, he, he also old Danny boy, that's not even my papa's favourite. But the burn stuff was about me for my family. And my my granny, as I say, that's I've got good vivid memories of my granny, you know. And she died all the years ago. You know. And funnily enough, I'll give her a wee toast because tonight is my granny's birthday. Happy birthday, granny. Happy Eat birthday, granny. Birthday. Happy birthday, aye. Well, honestly, didn't I, Douglas, when you'd sent the date for this, I went, yeah. I can't believe it, how perfect it's actually my wee grand's birthday. That's yeah. Uh, but aye. And I'll I I just do a wee bit of the deals of all, will I? Aye, go for it. The deal come fiddling through the tune and dance the war with excitement and Alka wife cries, Old Mahoon! I wish you luck of the prize, man. 
The Deus Award, the Deus Award, the Deus Award, excitement. He's danced the war, he's danced the war. He's danced the war with excitement. <laughs> Just in the first verse, come on, I mean. Ooh. I'm not going to sing A for and kiss, so don't worry yourselves about that. <laughs> I'm sure you'd make a good job of it. Um, but the, for A for and kiss, it, but, um, had we not had had we no met or ever parted, I see. I'm I'm all singing. I can the words to a fun kiss and then right. But the the the, the lyrics I like the most is the had we never loved the kindly. Had we never loved the blindly, never met, or never parted, we had never been broken, hearted. I just love that man. Well done. You need you nearly get into harmony with Jim Thompson, which right, is well that that not be impossible right enough. But in, in terms of songs of unrequited love, I think that must be a bit number one in the charts. I mean, you're deeply involved now because you're you're involved with the, the, the virtual bachelors club now. Can you, can you tell us a bit about that? Because there'll be folk out there who've never even heard of it. Yeah, I'm very very honoured. Uh, what happened was Jim. I'd been invited to the Bachelors Club and I, and I I don't know, maybe I was a bit too no share and whatever and a bit shy. No shy, but just going into a, you know what it's like getting into someone you don't really care on of them that. But uh, it was 2019, it was the December, I think it was maybe the 3rd of December, I'm no sure, somebody will correct me on that if I'm wrong. Uh, but it was the first Tuesday of the month in December and I was sitting here and I was like, ah, I'm going up there, man. I'm just going to go up the next. I'm going. And I went up and I come in. I didn't really care on anybody. And I was sat sitting there and it was the Wally Dixies. Because they could see the Wild and Wood were on that next. That was a brilliant. And they, they stared at me. I think it was Green Grow the Rashes. And that was me and Matt Jeanette's song, who sadly passed away and all. And see when this, I, I was like, ah. I think I'm meant to be here, man. Do you know that this is still wrecked for me than I and then the Wally Duck had seen me kind of singing and and I don't know, I didn't know Wally Duck at this time, right? And he says the uh, Pixie, because that's my Facebook name. Oh no, I shouldn't say that. That's my name. <laughs> he says, You look like you're wanting to do something in that. What is it? Do you sing? Is it poetry? And I'm like, ah, no, no, I, I'm just here to watch. And then he says, no, you look like you're itching to do something. What is it you do? And I said, it's a poem. And he went, well, you want to come up and do it for the company? And and I went, aye. Because I thought to myself, this, this is your chance. Do you know what I mean? This is your chance to go up and do what you do. And it felt right. And Robert Burns was behind me. So I felt, aye. I'm going to do this. I went up and I did my wee thing. You can hang a day. I pulled the Tibbulton Lassies a wee bit. And then I did the Tibbulton Lassies poem. And uh, it felt right. And it felt like a great honour to be actually in the Bachelors Club being a Burns poem, being a Tibbulton Lassie, being the Tibbulton Lassies. And I'll tell you what, everybody says I've got a bit of the witch in me, right? And I do believe it myself too, because the things that has happened, for me, for that night, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable going through that, walking through that door up there. Because I got in this, Tim Douglas. Aye, well, you need to tell us the story of the, the time before that when you didn't get in. So the time before that, it was quite a few years ago, I was sitting, drinking, dramming up in the crown and turbouting, sitting. I'll have a wee drink to that, actually, because we miss the crown. Dramming in the crown, right? And it comes over, right? And it goes, uh, they were good out with stuff. And I said, what's happening? 
It orders a bump supper over in the bachelor's club the night. We're doing the bar and we're doing the, the catering. Come on, a bump supper. What? Who's bum supper? Is it? Need to tell me about this. And they're like, oh, it's Ken for members only. Da, 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 da. So I'm sitting there, right? Few share bits later, I'm like, oh, I'm getting a little air, man. I tell them I was going to the show. I'm going to the show. Going to the show. Tell them to be sitting there. Where's that going? I'm like, I'm going to that bachelor's club. Fire's over, right? He's up the stair. Doors locked. Could hear the banter from behind the door. So I'm like, ah. Hello? Hiya. Door opens. I swear all opens. I'm like, how you doing? You all right? What's happening? He's like, ah, oh, we're having it. And I was like, ah, you're having a bun supper? I love bun suppers, me. I love them. Can I come in? I like, ah, no, you can't come in. And I says, how no? Because it's a men only bun supper. I'm like, ah, what? A men only bun supper? I went, in this day and age, you're kidding me, on. He's like, ah, no, no, you can't come in. I says, aye, but I could do he's a turn, I'm off a good. I could do the turbouting lasses. He's like, ah, no, you, you really, you can't come in. And I'm like, ah, but Robbie Burns would have wanted me in there. <laughs> he loved the lasses. Robbie would want me in. But anyway, it was a knockback. And I was like, right, fair enough. You're lost. Shuts the door on me. He shuts the door on me. And at the top of my voice, I just recited the about and lasses anyway. So behind the door. Did the about and lasses. Went to the show. Went back to the pub. Said nothing about it, man. I'm like, oh, next day. The owners of the pub were over and they're like, ah, aye, there was a lassie turned up here at the door last night, weren't none. And she's like, ah, oh, I don't know anything about it, Ken, and I bet you that's a woman Sammy's whenever there. You know what I mean? And it was me, that's what I did. But aye, so I was a bit wary about going back in case I wouldn't get in, but the door was open that night in December. I can fire in, and Wally Dick had seen something that I wanted to perform, I performed, and then Everything magical happened after that night. Everything magical. Well, we've we've kind of, you've kind of led up with the story of uh, of how it came about. So you, you've got to give us your your intro and the the, the Turbolton lasses now. Are they first shooting Shivan? Oh, of course, of course. <laughs> <laughs> for me, for an hour, an hour, they know that's chat with me, guys. Because I'm not fine. Do you know how they are look as if I've got wee cat ears? Let me just... Aye, they look, they look like horns. <laughs> and I'll, I... <laughs> it's only my specs, folks. <laughs> right, well, anyway. So, I've, I've obviously been a Turbouton lassie. I learnt the Turbouton lassies a while ago, do you know? Because I felt, well, the good man's written it. About is that I need to perform it because that's who I am. I'm a about lassie. So anyway, you saw Ken the story. Robert Burns, born 25th of January, 1759. Stephen Allen. Gosh, where is it? He was born there anyway. And the family stayed there. He was a year old. And then they moved. No far away up to Mount Overfront Fair. But it was not about Easter time, 1777. Robert's father says to him, here, Robert, I can a better place we can go. What's that for you? Turbouton. Turbouton. Rabbi's head was buzzing through excitement, thinking of this magical place called Turbouton. So on their horses they go. You got off from us, but that's Robert's feather. <laughs> and that's Robert. So off they went, galloping. Through the fields, as a crow, please. <laughs> and they arrived in the promised land, it had about where Robert 
was 18 year old and he was interested in women and whiskey and ring. And as a lassie fit about him, I can assure you he came to the right place. They wrote this poem, you know what it is, obviously. It is the Turbolton Lassie. If you get up to you on the hill tap, you'll dare see Bonnie Peggy. She kens her feather as a laird and she pursues a lady. The Sophie tucked a lassie bricked besides a handsome fortune. Well, can I win her in an act his little art in court? Get in be failing, taste the ale and Take a look at Maisie. She's doer and done a deal within, but Ablin's she may please you. If she be shy, her sister try, you'll maybe fancy Jenny. If you dispense we want a stent, she kens herself she's bony. As you got to you on the hillside, be in for bony Bessie. She'll give you a beck and bid you like and handsomely a drink. There's few so bony and there's nain so good and all King George dominion if ye should doubt the truth of this. It's Bessie's ain opinion. Here's to the Turbolton lassies, then and now. Mon the Turbolton! <laughs> My wee horns, I'm chuffed with that! <laughs> <laughs> oh, well done. Tremendous. I don't know anybody that does that better. You're just, just tremendous. Yeah, that, 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 that first night when you came into the Bachelors Club, that was a, a revelation that was just superb. And But you've been back since. I definitely have been back since, and um, then then the COVID struck, and we've been doing the Zoom meetings. And thanks to yourself, Douglas, we've been able to meet the first Tuesday of the month still, and continue to do so um, throughout the COVID. And it's been amazing to see everybody and to bond with everybody. Because I only had a few visits to the Bachelors Club um, before the COVID hit, and I thought, oh no, man, I've made all these lovely friends and. And then yourself, Douglas, yourself, man, you have done the Zoom meetings at, at religiously every Tuesday of the month, you know, first Tuesday of the month, and gave us the opportunity to be together. I'll be your eye, it's on a screen, but it's still good to have these in my living room. You know what I mean? It's been brilliant. And for me to be part of that, I really, really thank you so much. And you know that from the bottom of my heart. Um, oh, I'd say it, it's been great fun. But, but you've gone on to do all sorts of other stuff. Uh, I mean, the uh, the highlight for me was your, your appearance at the at the cottage, at the, the, the virtual burn supper there. How did that come about? Don't even go there, Douglas. This is, that's what I'm saying. If I walked into that bachelor's club and done that, it's been like, I can't believe everything that's happened. Can, I mean, and it's all in dates, Douglas, and I'm going to tell you this, right? No. I did the Bachelors Club, I think it was the 3rd of December, right? On the 12th of December, which is my birthday, I received an email for Hugh Farrell. The wonderful Hugh Farrell. I, I love, you kind of love Hugh, man. I love you all, but Hugh's, I love Hugh. I got an email for the Hugh Farrell. Oh, my birthday, Hugh Disney, Ken, it's my birthday. Ken, what I'm saying? Hugh's no idea. I've only met him once at the Bachelors Club. I get an email for Hugh Farrell to ask me would I do the Burns Supper <laughs> crazy at Burns Cottage 2021. Because that's how far in advance they book this, right? And I'm like that on my birthday. Thinking, happy birthday to me. Ha Thank you, Hugh Farrell. I can't believe I had to read it and read it. I was greeting. And I did, I'm a dead emotional lassie. 
I was pure greeting when I read it because I was like, oh, I cannot believe, can you believe it? Of course I get straight back to, I think I'm hanging about. I was like, ah, I, I'm so honoured, I cannot believe you're asking me. I, of course I'll do it. But what happened is, go back, this is 2019, 2020's man. One of the people, that I don't know who it was, couldn't make it to do it. I've got a voicemail now in my phone, right? Listen to this, it's about, I don't know, 3rd or 4th of January. Too far, I need to speak to you. Can you give me a phone, please? Check your emails. I'm like, oh, what's this about? Boom. Can you stand in and do the Burns Cottage Burns stuff of 2020? And I'm like, what? So we're just over two weeks to go. Of course I was like, ah, aye, man. Aye, of course. So I, did, I actually did the first year in 2020. I was booked for the 2021. But I actually stood in and did 2020. And Hugh gave me uh, the bra wear to learn. He goes, I think, you know, I think you'd be good at that end. I actually was, there was a, I, I don't want to get into it, but I, I wasn't great at the time, okay? And Hugh gave me, I'm getting emotional, Hugh gave me that opportunity to focus on something. Do you know, it was as if it had come in just to but go, here you go, here's the universe speaking to you. I'm a great believer in positivity and what you get, you get back. And I just felt at that point when I was quite low that that came into me not just the 2021 one, but the 2020, where I had to go, I, of course I'll do it. And I will learn that, and I will do it. And she says, it doesn't matter, you can read it off about a paper. I didn't need to read it off about a paper. I went and I'd done it, and it was the most like, honoured thing I've ever done in my life, do you know? And I'm getting emotional, I'm sorry, <laughs> but it's just, I'm not kind of last. It means a lot to me, it means so much to me to have that opportunity that Hugh Farrell gave to me, you know, it was like a outstanding that to, to think of me who a wee tip out and I say, what? You're kidding me on, really? I really, he says, and boom, there I was doing it. And, and you I, were fantastic. And then the virtual one, because that's the one I was actual booked for, was the virtual one. And I was like, and 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 here's another thing about dates, and you just won't come a bitch now. <laughs> because see the day that I went to film for the virtual burn supper, 12th of December, 2020. My birthday, I spent my birthday in Burns Cottage. How <laughs> 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 do you know what I'm saying? How special is that? Know what I mean? I was in Burns Cottage on Robert's birthday, performing for his night, for his birthday, and then for the virtual one. I was in his birthplace on my actual birthday, filming for the 2021 one. You couldn't make this up, man. It's all true. It's like... It's I just say I've got the back of the witch in me and... I've got my name is Samantha, so you know. I, I don't know about the witch. I don't know about the witch, but it, it certainly shows a character trait and some fortitude to be standing up in that cottage at that mum's supper, which I have done, and actually reciting a poem that I've learned for that event. That says more about you than you can really imagine, lass. Seriously. It was just an amazing, absolutely, an absolute good um, pleasure and honour to have been asked and um, to, to have been there and experienced it all. And Ken, something, guys, I'm going to tell you, is I felt like I belonged there that night. That's what I'm saying. It's like this belonging thing that I get with you. I don't know. It's just I felt like I belonged there. I didn't feel like I'm out of sorts. I didn't feel like, oh, what am I doing here? I felt like I'm here and I should be here and I'm going to do Robert Burns justice. Do you know what I mean? I'm going to get away me. My family, I take my family in my, in my uh, bag with me. My gran, my papa, 
my aunt Jeanette. They're all with me, do you know what I mean? And I look at them for support, do you know, especially that night, my first ever time being there. I'm like, ah, looking at them and Ken, and it's all right, you're meant to be here. It's, it's all good, do you know? And I'm so thankful, so thankful and so honoured and proud and privileged to have done that in 2020 and to done the virtual burn supper as well. And and just to be involved with the wealth, the knowledge of burns with people like yourselves means so much to me. I, if I hadn't walked into that bachelor's club that night, this had not would all be happening. <laughs> wouldn't it? And, 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 and bring the story up to date. What, what else has happened? Because I know there's uh, at least one event I'm aware of that you've been at. I was at the, the J July, the July gig. The summer supper. Yeah, the July gig, I'm calling it. <laughs> <laughs> it was brilliant. It was on the birth. Uh, no, the birth, the death of Robert Burns, sorry. Uh, the 21st of July, and it was a broad summer's night. It was the warmest of the warm, honestly. It was like Scorpio, and it was just, again, a small gathering of people, and it was just such a beautiful night. And my wee mammy was there, and my auntie Christine, and that meant so much for me that my wee mum, you know, was actual there. Uh, to see, not just myself, but all the wonderful performers. They did a brilliant night, my mum and my aunt Christine. They were just like pure buzzing to be there, you know, and it was it was a special, special night again, you know, and there was Bobby, Jess, it was Bobby, I love you, Bobby. The Billy Horn, say nothing. <laughs> He's some man, that's what I'm going to say. Uh, Tracy was there as well, Hugh and Ian Farrell. Oh, it was just amazing, so it was. It was a great but, but, but you're talking about being among people with a knowledge of burns. I mean, you must have a fair knowledge of burns yourself, because I know you you spent quite a lot of time getting to know about burns, even to the extent of uh, walking around about them fleece with Bobby Jess. Oh, aye, Bobby Jess, aye. That was the that was the dry tour. We've still to do the foo wet and wild, Bobby. <laughs> the COVID's put it off, but me and the lassies, the kens us. Me and the lassies, I'll still be, 2022 that is now, Bobby. Me and the lassies will be doing for the Foo Wet and Wild tour that we've been promised. No, Bobby Jess is a wealth of knowledge, man, isn't he? He's a brilliant man. I I, I, I know a wee bit about Burns, obviously, about him coming to Tabout and, you know, cutting about. Yeah, no, but I don't think Tabout gets the credit that it should for the amount of years that Burns was here, Ken. It's as if we're just a wee passerby. He spent, you know, he, he set up the debating society, society up there with his brother, Kim, I mean, he was there, to Bowden's Bachelors Club, Disney get the advertisement that it should, that's how I feel about it. Now, any viewers out there that want to come to the Bachelors Club, it's closed at the moment, but hopefully next year, hopefully, it will be open for tourists to come again, because there's nothing better I would love than but, you know, there should be, and I've said this for ages, seeing an our Ayrshire, right, there should be a Burns tour that happens where you start off at the cottage, can a bus tour thing? Folk book in, they see where he was born, they got to Mount Elephant, come over to Tid Bowden, they see about here, they even get in my wits, do you know what I mean? Show them about up to Mauchland. Do you know what I mean? And do the first shoot in Shebang in one and then you could have folk stationed at every location to do a bit of bond sport. How good would that be for tourists coming over to our country? Do you know, and even tourists from our country to come and and I, I've been saying this for years, so I think we should be doing it. You know, I think we should be doing that. We should be promoting Robert Burns, not just in oh the Burns Cottage and. We should be linking it all up now, putting in a big funding bid, getting it all linked up and getting this Burns tour on the go. I could be stationed at the outside the Bachelors Club, doing the Tidbouton lasses, talking a bit about Tidbouton. 
came what I mean. That's my vision and that's my dream, uh, what should happen for Robert Burns and his owner, that we should be doing that, us lot, here and now. Dragon's Den, if you're watching. <laughs> Big Duncan Valentine, Dragon's Den. We need quite a few thousand pounds for that, son, if you're watching. <laughs> Sounds like a brilliant idea. Sorry, I'm I'm waffling on here. I'm not. I mean, usual. No, you're you're, you're doing great. But we're, we're we're running we're running out of time. Um, I I just wondered if we could get you to do another reading before before we finish off, and um, if we gave you time to get the book out, even if you don't remember it, the bra would be fantastic. Don't need the book for it, Douglas. Don't worry about that. When it's done, it's done, pal. That's me. You know what I mean? Uh, see, see, before we go, can I just absolutely mention that it was my Aunt Jeanette that took me to my first ever bum supper up in Mauchland and the performers there was uh, Sharky, Mr Sharky, uh, Billy Nevin, okay. uh, Big Joke Mac a Tea, uh, who else was on? McFarlane, Bummer. Bummer. I, uh, Jimmy, Jimmy plays the pipes. Oh. Right, all them. Blown a wall. Blown a wall with them all. Do you know what I mean? I would, and Neil Adair, sorry, you're Neil, Neil Adair as well. Uh, Dane Holy Willie's prayer, kind of, he comes out all dressed up and that. But that was years ago, right? It was my aunt Jeanette and Big John Muller. Right, they're both away now. Um, but they tell me, my, me and my aunt Jeanette, um, used to go to Bun Suppers every year up in Mauchland. I loved going there. And my aunt Jeanette used to say to me, you should not be in that with Samantha. You'd be good at that with Samantha. You'd, you could be the Bun Samantha. And I was like, no, no, aunt Jeanette, no, 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 okay, no, I And big joke, Mark, he used to say to me, you should come round to the shed. We all day, the Bun's poetry and that, you should come round. And I never ever went, because I didn't have it in me at the time, and I wished it a lot now. Um, but I just want to say my Aunt Jeanette wasn't alive to know that I went to Burns Cottage and, do you know, I, I was like, I know she does know, really, but that was that I, I wished all the years ago, because it was her that just encouraged me to, to recite Burns and say, yes, that you say, you, you could be doing that, or Samantha, you'd be good at that, or Samantha, you're a performer, or Samantha, but I, I didn't really believe in myself. At, the, at that point, you know, and uh, I can show a lot of them now, as well my gran and papa, you know, big Sam Galloway's pigeon chest with boot like that, he's been about to boot and tell them every day. You heard what your Samantha's been doing? Burns Cottage, you know, he would, but it's my family that I owe it to, my wee mammy Mima, wee Mima, wee Mima Galloway, the lot of them. Um, that I look to for my love of Burns and for my inspiration and my get up and go today. The works of Robert Burns, it's 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 them that, that's uh, that's always with me and that encourages me to do it. Do you know? Well, we're we're reaching the end of our evening together, Sammy, and it wouldn't be right if we didn't finish without you giving us a recitation of that poem that you've done in the cottage and would invite you to give us your best to the bow your pal. Okay, so the next one I'm going to do for you, uh, it was the wonderful Hugh Farrell who put me under pressure at the time in 2020 and said, I think you should learn this one, hen. And uh, thank you, Hugh, because he did say, he says, I think it suits your character. It's a bit comical. And I thought, well, I've been, uh, there's been a lot worse said about me, too, so I'll take the comical, you know? <laughs> and I did, um, <laughs> I did learn it for him, and I didn't need my bit of paper to read it off. And I hope I do remember it in it, and it's called, and I've got to watch how I say this. Called the bro, wooer. <laughs> <laughs> and it goes like this and it's by obviously the wonderful Robert Burns 
Last me, I brought you a kind in the land, Glen, and stare with his love with a div me. I stayed there with nothing I hated like men. The deuce gave a him to believe me, believe me. The deuce gave a him to believe me. He spark of the birds in my bony black room and vowed for my love. He was Dean. I said he met D when he liked for Jean. The Lord forgive me for Leon, for Leon. The Lord forgive me for Leon. I will stuck at Mary himself for the words. And the marriage of Hon with his Crawford. I never let on that I kind of cared. But soak the my tea, war offers, war offers. But soak the my tea, war offers. But what would you think? And I thought, McDurless, the deal took his taste to get near her. She came up the gate, slapped him up all that cousin bed. Just you how the jada could bear her. Could bear her. Guess you how the jada could bear her. But all the next week, I fed the kitchen. I gave to the trust at Dalgamak. And for but my fine fickle wooer was there, I glowered as I'd seen a warlock, a warlock. I glowered as I'd seen a warlock. But ere my left shooter, I gave him a blink. Less neighbours might say I was saucy. My worry capered as he'd been in drink and vowed I was his dear lassie, dear lassie, and vowed I was his dear lassie. I speared for my cousin, who could be in sweet. Jen, she had recovered her hearing, and how her new shin fit her old chuckle feet. But heavens did he for a swearing, a swearing, but heavens did he for a swearing. He begged for God's sake. I would be his wife. Or else, I would kill him with sorrow. <laughs> so I aim to preserve the fair body in life. I think I'm on waiting tomorrow, tomorrow. I think I'm on waiting tomorrow. Ta-da! Uh, Betsy, that was fantastic. Wonderful. That was tremendous. Just so I couldn't, the camera wasn't an angle where I could do it. <laughs> For God's sake! You know, <laughs> but, but you can only work with what you've got on a screen, you know? <laughs> oh, it, was, it was great. Well, listen, that's been a, a tremendous episode. We've, we've loved talking to you. And just to say thank you for telling us about your life with Robert Burns. Thanks thank very you. much. Thank you very much. Can I well, just well, say, Douglas, well. Douglas, can I can I just say to you to to Jim and to Douglas, thank you so much. It's meant so much to me to have been asked to do this. Uh, then I um, have a lot of respect for the toys. He's have made me feel so welcome, as has everybody in the Bachelors Club. And if people out there are watching, you need to come to the Bachelors Club the first Tuesday night, either on the Zoom or come to the actual place. And if you've never been to the Bachelors Club in Turboughton, please try and arrange. To come up and see you in the place. It's absolutely phenomenal. But big respect to you guys. Thank you so much. Honestly, for bumping my hair. I love you so much. And uh, just thanks. And here's to Robert Burns. <laughs> Tremendous.